Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan. Please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to look at the functions of the liver, liver physiology. The liver has many, many functions. Let's look at them one by one. First of all, um, it's, it can synthesize amino acids. The process, one of the processes is called transamination, where we have an alpha keto acid, which is an alpha carbon with a keto group and a carboxyl group, which can get converted into an alpha amino acid, where the alpha carbon has an amino group and a carboxyl group. Now the process, as I mentioned, is known as transamination, and the enzyme used is usually known as transaminase or amino transferase. So let's look at one example. One example is if we have glutamic acid here, plus pyruvic acid, with one enzyme will yield alpha keto glut uh, glutamic acid and also alanine. Alanine is the amino acid, where the amino group is transferred from the glutamic acid into the pyruvic acid, making alanine. The enzyme used is known as alanine transaminase, or ALT. Note the transaminase. The liver can also metabolize amino acid. A process known as oxidative deamination essentially deaminates a molecule, removes an amine group, which is NH3 or 2. Because it is an oxidation process, the molecule itself is oxidized, and so hydrogen is removed. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have L-glutamic acid here with the amino group, and this will be oxidized to a molecule and then be hydrated again. When it gets hydrated, the, the previously L-glutamic acid will liberate an ammonia group. This ammonia group left the L-glutamic acid, and so this process is known as deamination because the amine group left. Ammonia is important later on because it can enter the urea cycle. We will look at it later on, though. But first, another function the liver possesses is that it can synthesize proteins. It can synthesize many, many proteins. One of the most important proteins is albumin. Actually, 50% of the total protein the liver synthesizes is albumin. Albumin helps in maintaining the osmolarity and also the transportation of various hormones. The liver also... Um, produces, synthesizes proteins for the immune system, such as the C-reactive protein, opsonin, which helps for opsonization, op opsonization of a pathogen, and also it synthesizes plasma complement proteins, C1 to C9. Complement proteins are important for destroying a invading pathogen. The liver also synthesizes various hormones and prohormones, such as insulin-like growth factor, IGF, not ILF, I know ILGF, sorry, it's IGF. IGF is important for growth and also has anabolic effects. The liver also produces thrombopoietin, which is important in platelet production. Platelets is important for hemostasis, for fixing up blood, blood vessels. The liver also produces another uh, hormone known as angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen is part of a big system known as a renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This system helps regulate blood pressure. The liver also synthesizes proteins that are, necess that, are like, that are clotting factors and inhibitors of coagulation, so anticoagulants. These are prothrombin fibrinogen and also antithrombin and alpha-2 microglobulin. Prothrombin and fibrinogen, um, you may have heard from hemostasis in the repair of a damaged blood vessel, for example. Now, the liver also uh, synthesizes plasma proteins that are import or carrier proteins that help carry substances or molecules from A to B, such as from the liver to the kidney or from the or from the liver to the muscle, for example. So these are carrier proteins. An example of carrier proteins is transferrin. Transferrin carries iron ions in the ferric acid forms, Fe3+. So transferrin carries iron iron atom ions around the body. Another one, carrier protein, is IGF, insulin-like growth factor binding protein. And this carries insulin-like growth factor 1, which, if you remember, is also produced by the liver. 
And if you remember, it's shown like growth factor one is important for growth and development. Now, finally, we can go back to the to the an, another function the liver does is that is urea, the production of urea. So the liver produces urea. What is urea? Well, let's just draw the liver here. So just recapping, we know that amino acids can uh, can be made into proteins, can synthesize proteins, it can synthesize plasma proteins. Plasma proteins such as transferrin and uh, insulin-like growth factor carrier protein, which are both carrier proteins. They carry proteins from A to B around the body. Amino acids can also be interconversion, can enter into conversion, so it can become a pyruvate or it can become another sort of molecule, but not amino acids. Alternatively, amino acids can um, follow deamination, removement of the ammonia group, and so we have an accumulation of ammonia. Nucleic acid acids can also be metabolized to give off ammonia. So what happens with this ammonia? Well, ammonia, NH3, can enter the urea cycle, what's called the urea cycle, to produce urea. Urea, urea will then get expelled by the body, and this is how um, um, amine groups gets expelled, N NH groups get expelled from the body through urea, and they're usually excreted in urine, so they go to the kidneys. Now possibly, well, one of the most important functions the liver has is the production of bile, so bile production. So the liver actually produces bile and secretes the bile where it gets stored in the gallbladder. The gallbladder is underneath, right underneath the liver and looks something like this. And then we have a common bile duct where the gallbladder can essentially excrete or secrete out the bile into the intestines to help digest fats. So let's look at this in a different diagram. Here we have the intestines and we have the pancreas right next to the intestines, the small intestines this is. The gallbladder is situated here and it essentially um, secretes its substances through the common bile duct which enters the intestines over here. The gallbladder stores bile. So what happens is when we eat fatty foods, fatty foods will get digested by the stomach, will enter the small intestines, and will stimulate the small intestines to secrete a hormone known as CCK because the intestines cannot absorb these fatty substances just like that. It needs the help of bile. So it secretes the hormone CCK, which will then stimulate the gallbladder to contract, to then release the bile into the small intestines, and to help emulsify the fats, cover the fats, so that the fats can be easily digested and absorbed by the small intestines. Now bile is made up of two main things. It's made up of bile acids, or salts, and also bile pigments. So bile acids and bile pigments. Let's firstly look at bile acids. Bile acids are amphiphilic steroids, and they emulsify ingested fats so that um, the fats can be easily digested and absorbed by the small intestines. Bile acids are amphiphilic steroids. What does this mean? Well, it means that if this was a bile acid, it would have one side which is hydrophilic, which means it loves water, and the other side which is hydrophobic, which means that it hates water. So what does this mean? Well, when we consume the lipid and when it's in the small intestines, the, the bile acids will begin surrounding it, where the hydrophobic regions will essentially cover the lipid and the hydrophilic regions will face the outside because the hydrophobic regions are scared of water and so they face inwards, whereas the hydrophilic region will face outwards. And they will cover this lipid, essentially emulsify it, and create what's called a macilis, macilis, I don't know really how to pronounce it, but essentially once they coat this lipid, this can get easily digested and absorbed by the small intestines. So some uh, types of bile acids include cholic acid, torocholic acid, and deoxycholic acid. Those are some type of bile acids and bile salts. So that was bile acids. Bile acids help emulsify fat. Bile pigments are different to bile acids, but they are also bile altogether. Bile pigments are actually the breakdown products of hemoglobin. 
hemoglobin are the centers of the red blood cell. So they're the break they're the breakdown products of hemoglobin, and these breakdown products, these bile pigments, will then be secre excreted out in feces, and that is why we have the brown color in our feces. So what do I mean by this? So in the blood, if there's um, extravascular or intravascular hemolysis, meaning destruction of red blood cells, um, the outcome of this would be unconjugated bilirubin, which is the product of destruction of rare red blood cells. These unconjugated bilirubin will travel through the bloodstream bound to albumin, which will then take it to the liver, the hepatocytes of the liver. So here we have now unconjugated um, bilirubin without the albumin. Unconjugated bilirubin will then be changed to conjugated bilirubin in the liver. Conjugated bilirubin is the bile pigment because it is the product of um, breakdown of hemoglobin. So this bile pigment, this conjugated bilirubin, will then travel through the biliary system, in, through the bile duct, into the intestines. It will get secreted into the intestines. The conjugated bilirubin will then convert to urobinogen through bacterial proteolysis. And about 90% of the urobinogen will actually be excreted as feces. So 90% of the bile pigments will be excreted as feces, this urobinogen. So what happened to the other 10%? Well, the other 10% will be reabsorbed through the portal vein, where it will then enter back into the liver, if you know what the portal vein is. So this urobinogen will then be in the liver, and will then travel back into the bloodstream towards the kidneys, where this 10% of urobinogen will be excreted as urine. So essentially bile has two things, it's made up of two things, bile acids or bile salts, and also bile pigments, so bile acids and bile pigments. Bile acids are to help in digestion of fat, bile pigments are the breakdown products of red blood cells, like urobinogen or conjugated bilirubin, which then gets excreted by the body as feces, mainly. Hope that all makes sense. Now, the other function the liver does is that it also performs carbohydrate metabolism very important. You can also watch uh, this on my biochemistry videos, but we'll just look at it at an overall picture here. So the liver has a major role in controlling carbohydrate metabolism and so blood glucose levels as well. So for example, after we eat, uh, glucose will be get absorbed by the liver, where it'll get converted to glucose 6-phosphate, then glucose 1-phosphate, one, one and then UDP glucose, and then it will get converted to glycogen. This whole process is known as glycogenesis, the synthesis of glycogen. So glycogenesis would happen if blood glucose levels are high. If blood glucose levels are low, glycogen will be broken down to bits of glucose 1-phosphate, which will then convert to glucose 6-phosphate, and then to glucose, so then glucose can be released into the blood um, to increase blood glucose levels. And this process is called glycogenolysis. Also, glucose can convert through a series of reactions to pyruvate and produce ATP in the reaction. If blood glucose levels are low and glycogen levels are low as well, amino acids and also fats, for example, can be converted to pyruvate, which then will go through a process known as gluconeogenesis to pr produce more glucose. The opposite of gluconeogenesis is glycolysis. So I hope you can see from this diagram that the liver not only has many functions such as producing bile but also in carbohydrate metabolism as well as other macromolecules such as lipid metabolism the liver actually produces a lot of lipoproteins lipoproteins as the name suggests is lipids and proteins but mainly lipids which travel around the body transporting lipids and proteins the liver also synthesizes cholesterol and phospholipids phospholipids are are the main part of lipoproteins Phospholipids essentially make up most of the cell membranes we have. Our cholesterol is important for the body for in, many, in, many fun, in many respects. If there's too much cholesterol, however, the body will secrete it, either in bile or cholesterol will be converted into bile acids because they have similar structure. And then this will be secreted in the intestines and be excreted as feces. I hope this video made sense. Thank you.